Good afternoon, Internet. Um, welcome to our Insight into Studying Marine Science at Newcastle University. Um, I, my name is Claire Simmons, and I'm de Degree Programme Director for our Postgraduate Taught Marine Science programmes. And I have with me three students from the programme who I would like to introduce them to. Hi, I'm Emma. I'm studying International Marine Environmental Consultancy. Hi, I'm Polly. I'm also studying International Marine Environmental Consultancy. I'm Carl, and I'm also studying International Marine Environmental Consultancy. <laughs> <laughs> Full house for the International Marine Environmental Consultants. Um, so we're live online today, and what we've done is we've compiled a list of frequently asked questions, I guess, that uh, students who are applying to do the course would like answered. And we are here for you to answer them. Um, we uh, have questions that have already been compiled where people have written in, and we have, will be taking live Twitter questions on the day as well. So if you've got Twitter questions, then do uh, reply and we'll try and answer those as well. Um, my name's Claire, I'm Degree Programme Director, and I've all, uh, I do the admissions for the programmes as well, so some of you might have come across my name before as well. So we'll make a start on the frequently asked questions list. Um, and the first question that people tend to ask me anyway um, are what modules you study on the Marine Consultancy programme? This is the principle of our program um, at the start. Um, this is the principal program that we have at this point in time. Um, and it's a mixture between marine science and guest business enterprise. So we start the first semester with uh, marine science modules. So we have a critical appraisal of coastal production systems module. We have a marine environmental research skills module. And then we kind of branch out into the management governance side of things with a marine uh, management and policy uh, module. And that kind of takes us up to Christmas. Then in the period after Christmas, we move more into kind of sectoral specific subjects. So we look at renewable energy as one example of an industry that requires marine consultancy. Um, and then we go into sort of uh, business and enterprise modules and the big part of the year, which is a marine consultancy project. Um, so they're the modules from my perspective. Have you guys got any comments on the modules that, as you've experienced them so far? Yeah, I think um, in addition to, to, to what Claire was saying, there really is a kind of diverse array of, of skills that you can develop throughout the course. Um, me personally, I come from more of a, a research background, so having the you know, ability to do some of these um, business-based modules was kind of one of the reasons why, why I chose the course. Yeah, definitely, and I think the governance module is also quite interesting if you come from a very pure scientific background, because that's something that you might have touched on a lot of the political and legal aspects of uh, marine governance and environmental management, which is very interesting. I agree with the guys saying, um, especially if you come from a pure science kind of background, it's definitely a good insight into like, how the industry works and prepares you for that. Lots of skills that are relevant. Splendid, which kind of leads us on to our next question a little bit, um, which was, do I have to have a marine biology background to study the programme? Um, and I think we said Carl was going to answer that. Definitely don't have to, I don't think. Uh, it might be helpful in one of the modules, the critical appraisal of coastal production system, and that's really the only one that has a lot of marine science background to it, but that still covers a lot of the basics of marine science for those who haven't done it. There's a couple of people in the course now who have done biology or other science degrees and there's, they told me that they found it fairly easy to kind of jump straight into because it covers a lot of the basics and background that you need to know to understand a lot of the more complicated aspects of it. And obviously otherwise the other modules are really just statistic based or business modules that you don't really need any marine biological knowledge to be able to do. Excellent. And the loaded question, I think, from my perspective, uh, the next question up is, what's the workload like <laughs> on an MSc programme? <laughs> Ollie. Well, that's a very good question, actually. And you kind of have to assume that if you're going into postgraduate study that you have a kind of raw passion for, for marine science. And so I think if you have that passion, the workload doesn't seem as bad. Admittedly, it's a, it's a giant step up from undergrad. Um, you, you, there is you know, a lot of work, you're covering 180 credits in a, in a year um, this time, so you do have to kind of bear in mind that, that you're going to have to work hard for it, but all that means that when, you know, when you come out the other side of it, it's all been, it's all been worthwhile. Yeah, I think some of the modules are definitely more intense than the others as well, the amount of research skill module being one of the more intense ones, and obviously before Christmas you cover 60 of 100 teaching credits, the Christmas, leading up to Christmas term is 
quite work heavy. It's brutal. But, yeah, it's um, hard work. Um, and then the exam after Christmas leading on to that as well. So it's quite a lot of work up to that, but it's well worth it when you hopefully get a piece of work. <laughs> They're all still alive yeah. now yeah. at the moment anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, you very much. I feel like you've learned things from it at least. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Um, it is hard work, but we kind of like to think it's fun as well. Um, I get a lot out of teaching it, and I think I get to know the students quite well before Christmas, which makes it rewarding for me as well. Um, so the next question, um, do you get to go on field trips as part of the programme, Emma? Um, okay, so in the research skills module we did before Christmas, um, we got to go into the field quite a bit. We went out to the marine lab that we have out in Colourcoats and did some work on the rocky shore there. And we also went out on uh, the research vessel that the university has out of Blythe and then um, got to practice some marine survey skills that I personally never really done before, so I had a really good experience and some good skills to put on your CV as well. Um, and then there is an opportunity for your research project at the end of the year, you could go abroad if you wanted to, which I think Ollie has done. Yeah, so um, after I graduated from undergrad, I had the um, great opportunity of working at the Cape Luther Institute, um, which is a, a research station in the Bahamas. Um, and while I was out there, and um, before I actually came uh, came and started the, the program, I was able to kind of collect um, a lot of the, the materials and samples that would uh, then kind of build into my um, my thesis program, uh, you know, my thesis project at the at the end of this program. Um, and so it, it's one of those things where you do have the opportunity to kind of influence. It, you know, influence the degree and, and, and get out of it what you um, what you kind of want. Um, so you know there is that opportunity to go overseas as well if you do have kind of existing collaborations or whether or not you want to utilise the collaborations that the university already has. The university has quite a lot of different connections as well, I think, which is yeah. really good. So if you want to take those opportunities, it's definitely there to do. Yeah, I think the, the Del Marine Lab as well is uh, also a great place to go and do field work, which you get to do in the environmental research uh, skills module. Get to go out there for a couple of days, and it's really beautiful on the beach, and it's very nice out there. People just go out and do some work. It's also a really nice field component on the course of things. A little bit there. Thank you very much. Um, I think that's kind of led us on a little bit to the next question, uh, which is for me to answer, um, which is to tell you a little bit about the range of projects available. Um, so obviously, it's a marine consultancy MSc program. So we like to think it's quite applied uh, in its nature. We are trying to take, I guess, marine biologists and scientists and give them business knowledge so that they can sell skills that they really already have um, out in the field. So uh, we have a final dissertation project uh, that comes at the end, obviously, of all the taught components of the masters, and that's quite a large proportion of the degree overall. So that's almost half of the degree. Um, and you can elect, as the guys have said, to kind of focus on an area that you're really interested in, to develop that project in, either in collaboration, as Emma mentioned, with some of the partner organisations that we have, um, or as a pure research project, as Ollie's uh, kind of mentioned. So we have people working like with some of the big consultancies like AMEC, and they kind of um, tend to be quite desk-based projects. You maybe sit and do policy analyses or um, try and bring together different components of all DIA projects and present an analysis of that for your project. We have, as Ollie did, uh, went out into the field in the Bahamas and collected samples and processed those as a very kind of pure uh, research end project. And we have kind of pretty much a whole uh, range of projects in between. So a lot of uh, the projects have a consultancy partner. So that can be a consultancy organization like AMEC or uh, Envision Mapping locally, or uh, NIRAS we've had before. And um, we work a lot with government organizations. So Natural England, the Marine Management Organization, the Environment Agency, we've had projects with before. Um, and as Ollie said, kind of Cape Luthera, places in the Bahamas that you can work with. We have a well-established network of collaborators overseas as well. So Wildlife Conservation Society in Kenya would be another good one. Um, University of the West Indies in Barbados. So there are plenty of opportunities, whether you want to work with a consultancy organization, work with a research partner overseas or in this country to deliver your project um, on a spectrum between kind of applied consultancy to research, from my perspective. Um, would any of you guys like to add anything just about the projects that you're thinking of doing or? Well, Ollie's, kind of chat, Ollie's kind of chatting about his research on a little bit, so we'll let him off. Yeah, I'm doing one with a local consultancy, uh, looking at uh, the actual worst predicted outcomes of EIA. So obviously that's more of a bit of a desk-based uh, study than what Ollie's doing, but 
from that I'll still get the experience of going into an actual office, an actual consultancy, and kind of seeing what it's like in an actual consultancy workplace, which is um, obviously quite nice. And you can still do something that really kind of interests you and pitch them a project that you're really interested in and think would hopefully be you know, a benefit to them that might also get published at the very end of it. So that you know, it's quite a good feeling, I think. Good stuff. Um, and I guess so the point that these guys are at in their marine consultancy career with us, we made it to Christmas, we all survived a big workload. We've been planning projects and um, kind of since Christmas, so they're really just embarking on those now. So just from their initial impressions, um, I'd like to ask them one of your questions, which was, is this similar to an undergrad dissertation? Everybody. Uh, I'd say it's, <laughs> well, it's very, I, I'd say it's different because firstly the project proposal for undergrad was two or three pages, I think. It's now eight pages plus appendices, gap charts, and all that kind of management planning stuff. Uh, and obviously also in this, if you're doing a consultancy project, you'll be kind of working with a client. So you'll have to actually meet with them, agree on a terms of reference of what exactly you're gonna be delivering to them, when you're gonna be delivering it, which is quite nice because that way you kind of get to sit down and have a list of this got to be done by this time and this time and this time. Whereas in undergrad dissertation, you're very much Often you're only doing a very pure research project, and obviously an MSc project has to be a bit more, you know, something more novel, something actual, very new that you can kind of publish or have some actual benefit from in the future. So from that perspective, it's definitely very different. I think. Yeah, I think it's definitely a, a huge step up from an undergrad dissertation. Like Carl was saying, undergrad dissertations are purely research based, and you can still do a purely research based thesis as part of the of the MSc as I'm as I'm doing, and I've definitely noticed that. You know, there's there's no kind of grey areas with this. You know, you have to make sure that everything you do is rigorous and everything is justified. And um, you know, you you you're, you're working at kind of more of a commercial professional standard now yeah. at master's level. And you know, like Carl was saying again, the the goal at the end of it is to hopefully you know publish publish your work, which would be fantastic. Yeah, and to be fair to the students, uh, kind of past and present, about twenty percent of their work is published in peer reviewed journals, and we're pretty proud of that as well as the employment record of people coming out of course. So how off to all of them for that. I'm quite sure this will be exactly the same. No pressure guys, no pressure. <laughs> um, so the next question came from Mauritius, I believe. Um, does the Marine Science Programme at Newcastle also include biodiversity research? Um, so again, I'll start with that if that's all right with you guys, um, but feel free to kind of chip in. So um, one of the strengths we think of our programme is that it's very tightly connected to the research groups that we operate in the School of Marine Science and Technology. Um, the one that's most closely coupled to is our Marine Biology Ecosystems and Governance Research Group. Um, and one of the primary foci for that is biodiversity research. Um, internationally, and so we have kind of international streams, we've worked a lot in the uh, Pacific, Western Indian Ocean, and most recently for the last five years in the Caribbean. Um, and we also have quite a strong North Sea programme, um, all of which kind of focus not just on biodiversity, biodiversity, but the interactions of humans with that biodiversity, uh, the impacts they have on it, and kind of how um, our interactions with biodiverse environments kind of drive the biodiversity in those locations. Um, so we like to think it very much includes biodiversity research. It's one of the core um, drivers of what we do. Um, what about you guys? Ollie's very biodiversity in his research project. Yeah, well, <laughs> I know I've been talking <laughs> quite a lot. Um, but yeah, no, again, like I said earlier on, this degree does allow you to dictate what you want to do to a certain extent. And if biodiversity research is some, you know, something that you want to pursue, then you can definitely build that aspect into you know consultancy-based or research-based projects. Yeah, I think just adding on to that as well, I think is a very good course because you get to work with a lot of these PhD students who are doing the biodiversity research and interact with them and obviously you almost do your, you can do your MSc project with them as well if you like to do something along those lines so you get to learn a lot from them and see what they do if you want to you know pursue an academic career in that sort of area which is really nice because you kind of interact and speak with them every day as well so you feel very much part of the, part of the academic staff at the university almost. Splendid, um, thank you very much people. Um, so the next question is quite a technical one, I guess for me again. So the question is, can I apply for both an MSc programme and an MRes programme? Um, at the moment, we only have 
the International Marine Environmental Consultancy Master's program running, so the MSc. Um, hopefully in September 2015, we'll start running an MRES, which, as we were just saying, is will be aligned to our research program, Marine Biology, Ecosystems and Governance. Um, so there will be an MRES program that will just have a much bigger kind of final dissertation project that's research-based that you can participate in. Like I said, that's not launched yet. Um, by University of Newcastle regulations for admission, you can't hold offers for two programmes simultaneously, but what you can do is apply for one of our programmes, and basically up until Christmas they share modules, so we can always transfer you to the other module at any time, the other programme at any time up until Christmas. Um, so if you would prefer to do an MRES degree, we will hopefully have that online for 2015 entry. Um, please do apply to the Marine Consultancy MSc programme and we can transfer you over onto the MRES as that becomes available. But no, don't try and apply for both of them. Our system, technically speaking, I believe doesn't like that very much. Um, in practice, I'm actually an admissions person for both of them, um, so I will I read your documentation very carefully and work out kind of what you do want to do at the end of the day, and we'll build that into our kind of future plan. Um, following on from that, I hope that's answered who was ever question it was on Twitter. Um, what the average class size is was my next question, which is kind of like a bit of a dull question from my perspective. But I guess we um, our long term average has been kind of like sort of 15 to 20. And we topped out at 35 one year, which was really big. So we try and kind of keep the class to the same sort of size it is this year, um, which is 18 of you who will be doing dissertations together at the end of the year. And um, so we like it around that kind of size because as Carl has mentioned, we can kind of really get to know the students and they us, which makes it much more rewarding all round, uh, I think. Have you guys got any comments on things like that, sort of facilities in relation to class size? No, I think it's, it's really good class size, obviously, yeah, we can kind of have a common room with like a kettle to coffee maker facilities in our own cluster, which you can kind of work from. It's a, because of the way the module is taught in block teaching, when you have a couple of weeks off after a couple of weeks of intense teaching, you still very much see and interact with the rest of the people in this class, in the class, in this common room, which is quite nice. And obviously, if there were too many people in the class, it wouldn't fit very well that little common room about, but it's very nice to have that space for all of us. And I think, yeah, it's a good class size. We all are quite social and we interact with each other and all. I think, I think it's really important as well that when you're using kind of software such as GIS that's built into a lot of the, yeah. the kind of modules that you're doing here, that it's important that you have, you know, computers and facilities that are allocated to that. And we do within our, um, Within our kind of program, we have a you know a computer room that is restricted to only our yeah. use, um, so we're not kind of fighting people for computers when deadlines get, get yeah. tight at the end of the day. <laughs> it's surprisingly <laughs> important, really, really, yeah. really. I think as Claire was saying, so like um, the smaller class size, so it makes things feel more personal. It's like in an undergrad degree, your class is really big, but now like you get to and know the lecturers more, and it's a bit more of like a can build a better relationship. I think. Yeah, I like that too. Um, slightly biased, but yeah, I like that. Um, so another kind of mechanical question for me, is it easy to swap from one programme to the other? Um, I would have said that uh, the same answer as I gave before, basically. So up until about Christmas, when you've done our kind of core modules, you can swap between massed programmes relatively easily. Um, Carl mentioned briefly that we block teach our programs. So we have intensive teaching weeks and then we have weeks where people like work on their own. And um, this actually can make it quite difficult to move to programs outside MAST. Um, so if you wanted to transfer to a conventional biology degree, um, or just trying to think what else you might want to do, a pure zoology degree or something that we didn't teach uh, and didn't have the marine context, it might be quite difficult to do that more than a couple of weeks into term. Uh, so apply for them by all means. There's a, always a couple of weeks at the start of term where you can change if you decide you've made a horrible mistake. Um, so yeah, but try and decide quickly if you want to move out of the school. If you want to stay in MAST, then you can swap over quite easily. Um, next question again, I guess for me, uh, is whether you can take the programme part-time. Um, we definitely have designed this block teaching mode to accommodate people, I guess, mostly from the UK and Europe that want to do that programme part-time. So, um, like I say, you turn up for an intensive week, you work independently for a week or so, 
Um, and we've designed that to facilitate people kind of maybe coming as continuing professional development, so coming from a job and being able to take sort of two weeks off a year and then complete the programme over sort of two to five years, I guess. Um, so yeah, we've designed it for that, but it would still be quite difficult probably to take it from overseas. Though I guess you could do one semester one year and one semester the next year um, or something. And you can certainly do your final project, um, which is a substantial proportion of it completely um, overseas in your own location. That wouldn't be a problem. Oh, phew, the next question isn't for me, <laughs> hurrah. Um, the next question is uh, probably for Emma, because actually Ollie and Carl were both our Newcastle undergraduates. Um, so Emma, can I ask you, was it easy to fit in at Newcastle? Uh, I think it definitely was. I mean, it can be quite scary moving to a new place, especially when you've been in somewhere else for like three years or whatever. But I found it really easy to fit in here, like especially with Welcome Week at the start of the year. Um, you find out all the information you need, student services, things like that. And um, you get to know all your course mates and your lecturers, and that's nice. Everyone's really friendly and everything. And then Newcastle itself is a really good place to be. It's a great um, social life. Um, and the campus is quite small then, but it's like right near town, so it's really easy to get into the town centre and everything you need. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so it's really good, I enjoy it. Yeah. It's usually quite a tight-knit group of students, oh, yeah. so I think yeah. everyone usually gets on really well, just from my perspective. Um, yeah. People support each other really well, and it's nice to watch. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, I came, I, well, I graduated in 2012 and went and lived in, obviously in the Bahamas for a year. Um, and then came back this year, so I didn't really, I didn't know anybody on the course. Um, and it's one of those things that you spend so much time with with people within the program that you you get really close with people, and you know, find it very very easy to to make friends. So, yeah, I think that's to do with the class size as well. It was a very accommodating group size to kind of get into and socialise with. We socialise quite a lot outside of the course as well with the people on the people on the course, which is quite nice, obviously. I think Newcastle in general is just a very easy city to kind of slide into. It's very, very cheap. Most people are very friendly, and it's, it's a very safe place to be as well. To be honest, so, so it's a good place to be. Brenda, we're getting there now. People are thinking. Let's, um, we're getting more questions coming in. So another applications question for me: um, What is the application deadline for postgraduate marine science? Um, to be honest, we will, if you're exceptional, accept applications really quite late on in the day. So we have accepted people, um, I guess, up until the end of June before. We really, really, really encourage you to apply before April though, because if we do have to start constraining class size, that's probably the first sort of filter. So if you're desperately confident that you're desperately good, you can apply late on. Um, if you're a student that we can process visas and things for quite quickly, but we really encourage applications, I guess, between now and April are when we get most of them. Um, so it's great if you can apply in a timely fashion. There is no specific deadline, but we will not take anything into July, really. Um, splendid. I don't know that you guys have got anything to say about that. They were all no. successfully accepted, <laughs> so we're all right. Check. Um, the last question I have on my list at the moment is what kind of career can people expect to, to go into after studying marine science with us? Um, so I think I can tell you maybe a little bit about the types of careers that ex-students have gone into and maybe um, the guys can tell you something about their aspirations after the course. Um, so we've mentioned before that uh, our dissertation is oriented around, I guess, doing placements with kind of consultancies or government agencies. Um, and actually in practice, we designed this to allow people to get a foot in the door, like with some of these companies. And students have gone on to work with a lot of people that they've contacted on the course. So some have gone on to work with the company that they did their placement with. And um, some have gone on to work just kind of in the uh, network that we put them in touch with while they've been on that course. So we have a lot of people go to work in the government agencies. So the Marine Management Organization in the UK, the Environment Agency in the UK, Natural England in the UK. Um, we have a network of people in very large consultancies, places like uh, AMEC, NIRAS, Natural Power, RPS. Um, we've got some students in Dong Energy doing renewable uh, wind projects and Fuguru uh, Survey Company at the moment. So they're the ones that kind of leapt to the forefront of my mind when I was uh, thinking about where people's destinations were. So they're people from recent years. We also have a fair smattering of people stay on to do PhDs, kind of either with our research group 
or um, with collaborators elsewhere, having built up their research skills as well. So that's very rewarding. I have some students that I supervised at master's level that have now graduated from PhDs with Howard Group. So that's a nice thing as well. Um, I don't know what you guys are planning. I guess you've got a variety of different plans between you. Um, yeah, well, I'm hoping to work for one of the um, consultancy companies after I finish. Um, I'm going to be doing like, a project as a placement with one of the smaller companies locally. Um, so hopefully, if, even if you don't get like a job straight from that placement, I think you've still got a really good sort of foot in the whole consultancy like, mm -hmm. world. And it's a really good experience to have and um, get you from yeah. We know nice people. A lot of the old students come back now and offer placements to new students, which I also think is a really nice thing, but from my perspective, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah, so like I said before, um, I'm kind of more focused on the research side of things, um, although I you know, completely acknowledge that um, because the you know, consultancy-based skills that I've developed in this course are going to be of fantastic use for me in the future, um, so I'm hopefully pursuing a, a PhD studentship. Um, after I've after I've finished the course um, with existing um, collaborators in Newcastle and external collaborators um, elsewhere as well, so fingers crossed that all comes together at the end. Yeah, I think I'm on the same line as Emma. I just want to work in a consultancy consultancy company, hopefully up here in the northeast or in Temperate and uh, polar waters. I think something like that makes sense. <laughs> Splendid. Um, so coming to an end now, I think we would like to say actually as marine science we're really proud of the employment rate that our students achieve i can't think of anyone that's been through the doors in the last few years that isn't actually employed unemployed in the sector which i think is quite a big achievement that i'm proud of and students should be justifiably proud of on their own behalf as well yes that's okay have we got any more questions kind of tweeting in from anywhere that's fantastic and um, in that case just leave it to me to say thank you very much from all of us um, for tuning into the live web chat today. Um, we hope you found the session useful um, and hopefully we'll see you at Newcastle sometime soon. Thank you very much.